Hi, John here. Uh, it's Friday, the 22nd of uh, February 2018. I've been doing a bit of um, investigation into some money that's gone missing in my account to the Justice Fines Courts of New Zealand um, and Andrew Little, the Minister of Courts, I've written to and my letter seems to have disappeared on Facebook, mysteriously disappeared. And Facebook banned me temporarily from posting <coughs> articles that are controversial to the Crown Corporation's business. It's hit a nerve on what I'm doing online, so I just want to make that public notice to you of a complaint against the courts here, treatment of me, and my automatic payments, I've paid my bill, and they said I haven't, and so they'll force me to pay $200 penalty for non-payment of fines, when clearly the bank has said it's gone out into justice fines and their account number. And they're surprised that the Crown, the Crown Court system has not picked that up and it's got a reference number to it as well from the Auckland District Court. <coughs> court system has set up an automatic payment for me and they can't find it. They can't find seven payments of $20 for a $147 bill. They can't find it. And yet, on my bank statement, it clearly says the reference on my account and the reference on their account, they can't find it. It's gone into a void, black hole, bubble. It's gone into a void bubble um, that no one knows. So, one court system doesn't know what the other court system is doing. And I find that extraordinary to be like that. So I'm going to um, publish all of that because I've got a complaint. The only way I make complaints to any legal authority or government or lawyers or judges is to put it on Facebook because it's disclosed of my allegations or claims against anyone with a bounty on your head of one trillion pounds if you upset me in my business with the King's business in Britain, UK, and this flag, our contract partners business that you're tampering around with and injuring me <coughs> personally with your incompetence. I'm my own competent witness to stand in any court and challenge anyone with your title and your permission to be occupying these lands on lease in New Zealand and Pacific Islands. If I say you get off it because you have offended me, you get off it and your lease is terminated. That's what I'm going through with the paramount chiefs of this country, at least this country, <coughs> in legal apostoly, legal authenticated documents that states I am the King's surrogate partner to the Royal British Navy, First Lord of the Sea, Sir Philip Jones, and I'm acting in the King's footsteps, his position of his business of collecting rents, rates, fines and administrative costs off any third party in a two-party contract I have with the King, as the King, speaking for the King, because there's no King there, and no one's likely to go there except King Ernest Augustus V, reigning monarch of Britain, the UK, Hanover, and Aotearoa, New Zealand, Pacific Islands, Commonwealth countries, in 250 countries of the world, with this flag. <coughs> the 1834 Declaration of War, State of Emergency, threat against our Paramount Chiefs and 
the general public of New Zealand, common law, king's people, versus the queen's people, and this New Zealand government fraudulent court system. It's rampant with corruption in the system here. The justice system is defunct. It will take me a struggle of pain to obliterate them with this flag and my king's title as paramount chief and commercial landowner on this country. If no one can refute what I'm saying, then the apostoly, the sealed documents, becomes law. I will force that law on you to show me your title and show me who you are and what you're doing here. If you can't tell me, you'll get booted out or locked up. I warn you, Andrew Little, you're just another man playing in the court system of Crown Corporations, Rothschild Banks, and a Queen who's not there. You have no seal of the courts here from Westminster. You have no seal of Queen Elizabeth or Queen Victoria. I said that to Judge Grant in a court hearing. They arrested me unlawfully and the case was dismissed because I said the same thing to the judge there. You have no authority over me. You have no jurisdiction over me as a surrogate king with a flag <coughs> and my position as a paramount chief with the original British native deeds of title truth memorials to this country and I find you offensive, you injured me personally and your legacy of continuation of fraud and corruption of the system here is abhorrent <coughs> and chargeable offence. 970 million trillion trillion pound note you share with your Queen Elizabeth who's not there. She has abandoned ship of Admiralty in Britain and gone into EU Parliament as a threat against our national sovereign authority and financial investment interests, bank, trade <coughs> and investments overseas today against your own private interests and bank investment interests overseas. You're operating a fraudulent government business operation against our landowners, commercial landowners, financial investment interests of this country and the people who are occupying the land with paper titles under your crooked land court system of Maori Crown Iwi Trusts. They get the bill, 970 million trillion trillion pound note two. The Maori government gets the bill too, 970 million trillion trillion pound note two. The New Zealand Navy gets the bill, 970 million trillion trillion pound note two. The Labour government of New Zealand gets the same bill, 970 million trillion trillion pound note two. Queen Elizabeth and her royal families and Rothschild Banks, her family, gets the same bill, 970 million trillion trillion pound note on this video cited fact evidence. <clears throat> All those others who have named publicly on Facebook and YouTube, 1534 YouTube videos citing you. Any one of those videos cite you in your name if I called it out or written it in my YouTube and Facebook sites. 109 Facebook sites with 97 sites operating. Your name in there, statements against you, is used as evidence on Facebook and YouTube, admissible in any court of law, and especially a Maui Crown Native King's Bench Court Magistrate <coughs> Native Jury Trial Court. Mono Mono. So, I'm going to ring my lawyer now, Tony 
Fortune. <coughs> <coughs> and see where he's got up to with my court case or with my files. <coughs> I have to record this so I can keep track of everything I do. Where is it? 436. 436. 529. Here he goes. I haven't called him for three weeks. Yes, uh, it's John Wanoa here speaking. Sorry? John Wanoa. Hi, how can I help? Uh, I'm just checking up with uh, Tony Fortune on my yes. case. I'm hoping to come and see him on uh, Wednesday or Thursday next week. It's been, oh, okay. It's been three weeks now he's been pouring over my documents to apostolize. Uh -huh. And I've got one more I'm just doing that'll... Uh, go right over the top of them to make it a bit better okay. um, with a more defined um, 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 format. I've, okay. I've spent all that time to do it. So if I can make make time or um, my friend um, Morris Baker wants to know what is the cost, likely cost going to be. He hasn't made me an um, inventory of what it would cost or his assessment so far. Mm -hmm. And so if he, if you can let me know, I'll just write an email to him. I've been very patient um, to let him um, look at the situation and um, get a bit of understanding about me. But my uh, private investigator, Graham Aylett, is still waiting for a letter from him, uh, to him, to proceed with the um, cases I'm doing. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. I spent my time talking to her. We'll see. Tiny Fortune. Hello? Oh, hello, uh, Tony. It's John One Hour here. I thought it was an answer phone for a minute. Um, <clears throat> I've just come back from North. I've been up on my friend Morris Baker's farm doing some work for his uh, business there we're going to start up and um, but we just uh, want to catch up with you on um, so far we've got with our uh, documents um, I've got another one t that would look more better um, I've spent the last three weeks putting something else together to make it a bit more defined um, or if um, Morris wants to know uh, the likely cost um, of um, you and we hope to come in to see you on Wednesday or Thursday next week. He, he wants to pay your bill or to see what um, what is the outcome. So far, uh, we've been sitting there um, uh, without ringing up to see. Okay, so are thing. you replacing the documents you've sent? To no, no, no. Um, um, it might well for you to look at it because it might be a bit more presentable. I've broken it down and, and to make it look more legal um, without all the other bits on it. But th those ones you've got <coughs> are sufficient if you're uh, quite happy with them. But this will just accentuate that. Um, it's 23 pages of um, better, uh, uh, um, better outlay. So uh, I, will, I will send you a hard copy or, or bind up copy or, or email it uh, to you then you can have a look at that one before Thursday or Wednesday <clears throat> and then we will pay your bill. That's what he wants to do. Okay. He wants to get on with um, with other matters. He wants some cases for you to look at as well uh, with his um, own family and the lands, uh, namely the 10 land blocks he's, he's got um, to transfer over. Uh, these 
achievements, um, I'm going to be able to do anything worth. Um, but <clears throat> I, I don't mind if you break it around or, or whatever, so long as I, I can get something that's passable. Or, right. or uh, and the most of all, a letter to Graham Allen, the private investigator, is waiting for that. Um, uh, that that would set the whole thing off. Even though I got that to start with, we can always uh, have time to uh, perfect the uh, the apostille to get it right. I, I wanted to get it right, <clears throat> and from your eyes, uh, not mine. And uh, this one I'm sending you um, would would get more. Um, definition into what I'm trying to say, right. of who I am really, it's who I am and what I'm, I'm proposing to do as uh, as what I claim to be uh, and to Britain. Uh, it's mainly Britain that I have an association with uh, and that, that, that's the main guts of, of what I'm, I'm putting across, their interests. Mm. Okay. Um, well, as far as cost is concerned, as I think I've told you, my hourly charge out rate is four eighty five dollars an hour plus GST. Oh uh, yeah, I understand that, but I just wondered, uh, from what you've going over with those documents, um, what the cost would be. Well, I I need to have a a look at these documents and. Uh, so it's going to be, well, it depends how long I spend with you, but I would imagine it's going to take me half an hour to sort through and sort out what you've sent through already. Yes. And then it's a matter of how much time uh, I spend going over it with you or going through things with you, uh, assuming I can do something with it. And yes. that's going to be the, the, the question. Uh, you have a passport? No, I'm 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 going to get one. I haven't I haven't bothered to go anywhere yet. So, what form of government issued ID ID do you have? Just my driver's license and um, uh, that's and my uh, senior status. I, I guess that's all. Or, right. or or tribal matter. That's that's about all. So I, I, a, I've got a passport, but it's expired, and I have to get a new one. I can get a new one. It, right. it, I just pay down one hundred and eighty dollars and get a new one. That that would take me a week to get that. I have to get that anyway because they're waiting for me in Britain. Right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the passport is preferable. Uh, I'll get one. I'll, I'll get one anyway. I'll I'll, I'll I'll apply online to get one straight away. Okay. Yeah, today, and so that's uh, that's that part I can yeah, do. Yeah, well, I, I would yeah, get that um, plus your driver's license. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, but I'll I'll have a look through this and uh, uh, come back to you now. I think we've got your oh yes, I've got your uh, email here. So uh, I'll have a look at these and come back to you come back to you, but at this, uh, but until you get the passport, there's probably not any, uh, not worth getting together, because if I'm going to witness anything, I really need to see a passport. Okay, that's fine, I can get that. Um, <clears throat> so at this stage, it just needs to be between me and you. Morris will come whenever it's appropriate, but I think I'm the author of the documents for a start. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we'll just treat it that way, right. uh, between me and you, but he's the one that's paying the bill okay. um, because I'm helping him on his farm to get his titles right and there's some work there. He's uh, able to accommodate costs for that, but I just wanted to get something um, um, uh, together, uh, even a letter from you to Gray Mallet on on what he wants, um, uh, just, just to get well, him. If you've, if you've got anything further you want to email me, do so, but yeah. otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'll have a look through these documents uh, further and, um, and let you know um, what I can do with them. Um, and, uh, and then when you've got your passport, 
that's fine. We've been uh, we've been patient with you because we want you to be our long-standing lawyer. Uh, and so, if we get on good terms with you, then I've been um, in brokering before with banks and land issues. So, if I just start up what I used to do by bank brokering, then we we might have something good um, going uh, business um, between us. <clears throat> that's what I'm looking forward to. A good lawyer. Um, as, as my profile um, um, to do what I'm doing um, and I hope that's the case is going to be um, Morris is in support of me <coughs> and um, he has his own business uh, so on the farm so um, but I'm working with him to make sure we um, we can keep up the bill of whatever it's going to cost us to get these documents done because we're running some time now um, um, before we can start anything. That's only our own uh, business and nothing to do with anybody else. Right. Okay? Okay. All right. That's fine. Well, I'll have a look at it and I'll come back to you by uh, email uh, yeah. sometime early next week. That's right. I'll, I'll email you these uh, documents. They might look better than the ones you've got. Okay. Okay? That's fine. Thank you, uh, Tony. Right. Bye. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye. There you go. <clears throat> That's Tony Fortune. He's he's a very good man. I thought he was doing all the work. That's what we're waiting for. But no, he hasn't looked at them yet. Yeah, well, he's got to look at them. But he'll only do things when I go in to see him. That's the only time they go on appointments. So, so far, I've been in with him, with Morris. We didn't spend much time. We just stood there and said hello and dropped some things and took off. It was raining. The lift didn't work. Morris went up four, five flights of steps, and that's all we got. Um, but I've had one prior meeting with him, uh, and now I'll have another meeting with him. Um, I've got to get my passport uh, done. So that's a requirement. So these things I'm just finding out. I've been busy for the last three weeks, don't get me wrong. I've got a lot to do in business, setting up. That's what I said to him. I want a good lawyer. And I want a letter to Graham Ellett. Um, <clears throat> we're running out of days now. And a passport will take seven days, so that's next week, uh, and he hasn't done anything yet um, other than say he's going to look at the documents. Well, hmm, I'm not forcing the issue because I've got plenty to do, and Morris is a little anxious to what it's going to cost, <coughs> but I think Tony <coughs> in his right mind, knows um, what is required. I'm, I'm going to get my head around it next week, starting from tomorrow. I will be not a farmer anymore at Morris's for three weeks. I'll be a bank broker and a legal advocate come land agent bank manager of such a sheriff and a private investigator judge in a native magistrate court sitting. <coughs> so my letter disappeared to Andrew Little, the Minister of Courts. Judith Collins used to be the last one of them. Minister of Courts, Justice Minister. She flipped out and gone, made her money like a pirate and milking the system. You're going to get caught. I've been watching. Moai's watching you. Someone's going to make a move, a wrong, fatal move. The British are watching you, watching me, like detectives. So, um, um, I won't read you this letter yet because I'm not finished it. 
it's my bank account. Maybe I should read it out to you. I'll just finish off what I'm saying about <coughs> uh, where to from here with the lawyer. I really thought he was doing the documents. They can't have been a high priority or he is waiting for me to come and see him. That's a good sign. No news is good news. You see, he didn't say no. He didn't say, oh John, I found something wrong with that. <clears throat> but he wants to go over things with me, you see. He wants to go over the documents with me so he can familiarise with him, me, who I am, talking about those documents. That's the time it takes. Uh, and so I have to tell Morris, the lawyer only charges for his time when you're in his office. In <coughs> doing what I instruct him in his office, not on the line. Well, letting him figure it out. <coughs> he does not know anything about what I'm writing. You see? Because it's British law is not his law. He has to interpret that law before it goes and gets apostolized because he's putting his name on the line and his seal on the line. It still has to go through him before it goes to the government in New Zealand. Internal affairs and the foreign affairs to Britain. No matter what, it has to go through this government on this land whose land it is, I'm saying the title is what I'm holding on to, this land, as a commercial landowner, I've got to tell him that. I've got to tell him I'm a surrogate king and a surrogate paramount chief. <clears throat> the author of all these documents. So I'm going to ring Morris Baker. I let him know. I just got off the phone to Tony Fortune, our lawyer, or my lawyer, but now my lawyer and Morris's, because Morris is my friend, business friend. Where's, where is he? Uh, I want to talk to him rather than go over my documents. I haven't finished them yet. Where's Morris Baker? Oh, Morris Baker, here. Yeah. Is it? <coughs> Hello, your call cannot be taken. Mr. Morris. Please leave your message after the tone. Mr. Mr. Morris, Mr. Morris, are you there? Pick the phone up, Mr. Morris. Hello? Oh, he's not there. Mr. Morris is still out working with his wife. Okay, we'll leave it there. In the call. If he's there, he'll ring. I'll ring the mobile. Marianne's phone. Hello. Marianne, Baker. At the tone, record your message. Marianne, <clears throat> um, just tell Morris I, I just got off the phone to the lawyer and he can call me later on when he gets back, eh? Okay? Bye. <clears throat> Those are my co partners, Morris and Gan or Marianne Baker. I'm setting them up. I'm going to be on their executive to run their business with them, for them, to make sure it stays on track and the money that's going into it from what I get in recovering debt. <coughs> so, um, um, 
I won't ring Graham Millett, or I might, I might just ring him um, and let him know where I'm at. My private investigator. Not there. If I can't get it in the mind. Just leave it. Oh, not there. It's dropped off. This is a funny phone. This is a funny phone. Battery. Mm. Mm. Battery. <clears throat> gives you a fright when that happens. I'll put it on a charger this year. Fast charger. Oh man. So as it is as it stands, our lawyer really hasn't done anything yet. He could have emailed me and let me know to come and see him. But that hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> anyway, I wasn't in a position to see him anyway. I was busy with Morris on his farm. We have things to do, and we thought the lawyer was doing his job. But he's just picked the papers up, the documents. I said, oh, wait for this other one, because it could be better than those ones. Well, in fact, it is better than the ones he's got. And I want him to do this one. You see, it took me a long time to do the other ones. It took me just as long, three weeks, to do this one. Twenty-six or so pages. At Morris's. I put a bit of time into it. And so he's got to look at that one. He's going to ask me a question when I go and see him. <coughs> and go through each page. And that's, my friends, what's going to make up the apostasy of what I say to him in person. It's the time it takes for him to ask me questions so he can satisfy himself as a lawyer, compete, competent lawyer, as myself a competent witness of my own documents. He's going to listen to what I say and interpret what it means to him to put it through the government to the British. The British will know what I mean. It's a straight title. A British title. Deed. In three paramount chiefs and three kings. Emperors of the titles I'm holding on to. To apostolise. To legalise for the very first time in the 193 years since 1820 and 1823 private contract between Te Reo Waikato Whare Here Here Manukau Paramount Chief and King George IV that's the private contract that set off the British buying and selling land here in New Zealand Altair, in Hokianga and <coughs> Waipara forests and the forests <coughs> up in the northern region and Kaipara. Kaipara Harbour, the shipping came into Kaipara Harbour in Helensville, Awaroa, Native Magistrate Court and the other Native Magistrate Court in Rawini <coughs> in the Hokianga Harbour upper reaches of Mangungu Mission House there of those Paramount Chiefs then Oritikuri being one Ramaka, his father, in the Wesley Church, 
and Horichikuri in the Rawane Native Court as Crown British Native British Crown Agent, a native black man, not Maori. There was no Maoris in sight. Right up to 1945, there was no Maoris in sight on British documents. It was an invention of the Crown Corporations in New Zealand and New South Wales government. Nothing to do with the British government. I'm afraid that's the truth. Tony Fortune, if you see this video, that cited evidence of what I say is the truth and nothing but truth, so help me God. My Earth statue is a memorial to God's Earth. That's my Tahitian Royal Wanoa family heritage and native title to this Earth planet from Rapanui East Island to Mokanui Mara Ngairoa Marae and Rangitukia native magistrate resident William B. Baker a distant bloodline ancestor of Morris Low Baker or Lobo as they call him. My friend in Tahiti. I've got all these titles here. For the lawyer to see, I'm going to take them in for him to peruse for them and the Manikau's titles to these lands. So, those are Horitakuri's titles in Ramaka, his father, and Heremiah, the son of Horitakuri, and Morris Lobo Baker, the descendant, the claimant of those titles. I'm going to transfer with my lawyer, notary public, for the British government on these lands, deeds of title. I'm transferring these land information titles, lands, New Zealand titles, fraudulent, corrupted titles, back into the original deed titles and remove the mortgages off every title after this one of Morris's on the Mary land titles and Cook Street, 77 Cook Street, British Crown title grants. Okay, so that's my job as a native land commissioner of all these lands here and the Pacific Islands under the Maui Crown Federal State Government of the Well, the Pacific and New Zealand. Under those three paramount chiefs, Te Rewakato Wharehere Manukau, Rewharefa Manukau and Hong Hori Tikuri. Three chiefs and three kings King George IV, King William IV, and King William IV, and King William III, sorry. King William III, King William IV, and King George IV. Those three kings, emperors, and three chiefs constitutes the Moai Crown King William IV Trust, bank, flag, 1834 flag, creditor. Okay, two-party contract. Third party is everyone else that's tampering with our titles that I just showed you here and the Manukau's titles, the Wanoa titles and the Maui Crown titles. Okay, so that's about all I wanted to say. <coughs> and so I'll just see if I can... Get Manahi back again on the phone. Where did I put my phone? Hmm, I lost that now. That phone, one phone, two phones, just a fabric. Gotta get Morris another fabric. Because I've now discovered where it went to.
what have I done with my phone? I had it in there, yeah. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. Charging up. That's where I put it. Anyway, at the moment, um, um, my focus is on banks, on the My Bank, the Pound Note, the My Pound Note, the lawyer, the private investigator, Gray Mallet, and um, the flag, sovereign authority, and seizing the first plan of Cook Street. Uh, 77 Cook Street and the motel at Hicks Bay or, and Lodden Point and the lands around it. Season back and the lands at Rangituki where the native magistrate, resident magistrate William H. Baker was stationed on behalf of the British Crown. <coughs> King William IV, King George IV. St. Mary's birth, death and marriages, St. Mary's Church was established there in 1831 on our land box at Eastgate and that title was a precedent case to the rest of the native countries in the world using that native title, land, <coughs> as a haho land and the Rangitukia lands as a case prisoner for the rest of the world. Uh, and Tira Waikato, Wharehere Manukau, and Pohara Marae in Arapuni. That's my Waikato title on the memorial rock there, statue of Punga Punga Hapu is the rock to Mangatotari Mountain at the base where the Marae is. That's the connection uh, to King George IV period of time with Te Rawaikato Whare Here Here Manukau in the Cambridge region there to Cambridge, England where he went with Hongihika. He did all the documents, I'm talking about Te Rawaikato, he did all the legal documents to transfer the land of New Zealand into the British Crown land patents of King George IV, 1823. Between 1820 and 1830, King George IV, that period of time, <coughs> transferred to his brother, King William IV, and this flag in 1834, reigned from 1830 to 1837, King William IV, and Refref Manukau period from 1830 to 1862. Native land there of New Zealand um, was Refref Manukau and John Rogan, sale and purchase agreement of Pukekoe Uetawa land, sale to King William IV, British Emperor, through Queen Victoria. New South Wales and New Zealand government at the time transferred that land to the British. That's my title I'm holding over that Mangatotari mountain back into the custody of the Punga Punga Morai Hapu and their paramount chief. Tira Waikato Whare Here Here Manukau, the Moriori Paramount Chief. That's my title I'm holding on to on behalf of Pohara Marae and the Mihinuis, Pita Mihinui, Pita and Wai Mihinui, Wai Terangi 
Mimi, that's my daughter's name, that name as well. Uh, Waitorangi, um, Mimi. Uh, and my first wife, Carolyn Mimi, or Karolina, Karolina Mimi. We lived there with our family, our two kids then on that marae in his house. The house is still there. I'm going to restore it and put a building up memorial to the Pungapunga hapu people that belongs to that area. Not Tainui. It is not Tainui's title. I'm telling you on this video, fact-sided evidence, that you have to challenge my titles that I'm holding all these titles to this country and the world for that matter. Not Maori. That's an invented tribe. It's not real and Ngāti Whātua is not a real tribe. It is manufactured, invented, created as defaulting or, or defrauding the public of New Zealand and Pacific Islands and the native, real native chiefs of this country, of a tribe that does not exist. It has no real legacy of titles, whakapapa. It was made up. All of the treaty claims under Tira Waikato, a woman, in Ngāti Whātua is corrupted fraud. Every one of them in the treaty claims of Ngāti Whātua as a Pākehā New South Wales, New Zealand Crown Corporation's private interests. It's nothing to do with anybody. It's not real. So Maori, I'm afraid, your Maori government is corrupted. You wear the bill of Moai Crown if you can't refute what I'm saying on this video. There's 1,534 videos you must refute, every one of them, and all the statements I make on Facebook, 109 Facebook pages. Any one of those pages has something against you. Alfred Mitchell, I have said statements against you. You have to produce your title in front of me, otherwise face the hanging rope and boot it off this land, because I'll boot you off if you can't put your title in front of me, your own Mitchell family. I'm putting you up to it on this video, right in front of everybody, and my lawyer that just hopped off the phone. You see, I know how to handle lawyers. Pick the best one and stick with them all the way. That's why I said to them, I need a good lawyer, because that's how I used to do my business in bank broking and land conveyancing, transfer of titles in mortgage refinancing. and loans set up for homes. Right? I was doing all that vehicle conversion to CNG LPG alternative fields. I'm licensed to do that business as well as real estate. So Alfred, if you've got any of those qualifications you'll get somewhere near me. But at the moment you're all pissing in the wind. And you stand in front of Marai and you stand with the Maori government, because that's the government of Wellington, it's a Maori government, because they're using Maori documents that are fraudulent. Everything with the word Maori on it, or iwi, is fraudulent. I'm sticking the bill on your head. One trillion pound note. Watch me. It's stuck to you, Alfred. I'm not pulling it off, because you upset me. Anybody that upsets me gets a trillion pound on your head if you can't put a title in front of me in these titles in here. These are deeds. These are deed titles. Ten of them. Of Maori land blocks. The first one, 80 acres. 80 acres and the rest. I'll do them one by one. And I'll set them up with all the recovered debt money you owe, Alfred. You owe all that debt. You're in a trillion dollar debt because you've made agreements with the Labour government of New Zealand the same paintbrush with the New Zealand Navy, the same paintbrush with you Maori government, the same paintbrush. <coughs>
judgment debtor. We are the judgment creditors, Maui Crown, King William IV, Federal State Government, with this flag. It's not your flag, Alfred. It's not for Maoris. It wasn't given to the Whakaminia either. It was given to these three chiefs. And you hijacked it. Your pirates and prison convicts from Australia, Mitchell family, came here and robbed this whole country with your Maori land titles. Your word Maori belongs to you and it's clothed in debt. It's been fashioned and you are stuck with it. That's all I can say. It's a debt that you joined yourselves to the New Zealand government. They can walk away and leave you with it. They have that option, but I'm watching them. The British are watching them. Who makes a fatal move? Already, Jacinda has taken over this government as a Prime Minister, and John Key skipped it. He's not getting far. John Key, your head's on the block. <laughs> your head's on the block with a bounty on your head of one trillion pounds, Moai pound no levy debtor instrument or creditors note on your head. And the rest of your properties are going to be seized. I get past this lawyer. I've been patient with him. And then the private investigator, Gray Matter. I'll see if I've got his number here so I can ring him. I, I wanted to catch him on, on the phone before it ran out. Um, no, I better give him a call. I hope the video stays long enough. Otherwise I'll just restart it. If it goes off. Where's my phone? Okay. I'll take it off there. Got enough nothing for now. Let's do this. Okay. Oh, where's his number there? Where is his number? I just saw it. Um, mm -mm. I'm just in a better mood now because when I came back from north I didn't feel too well. I was under it. Hmm. Six three three. Okay, here goes. My private investigator. Graham Allen. 